Hey there, Mike Plume here. Welcome to Stories from a Lonesome Stretch of Highway. Every once in a while, every now and again, when the moon's holding water, I'm gonna pour a cup of coffee and tell some stories. Episode one, last thoughts on the song called So Long Stompin' Tom. Back in March of 2013, I was at a pub in East Nashville with some friends of mine when my brother sent me a text message saying that Stompin' Tom Connors had passed away at the age of 77 years old. When I read it, the first thing I thought was, well, that's the end of an era right there. That is a chapter of Canadiana coming to a close. I didn't really think any more about it other than the fact that it was just, you know, sad for the family and sad for, well, the Canadian music identity, if that makes any sense. Anyway, the next morning I got up, uh, took Ruby to school, came home, poured a cup of coffee, and like I always do, I try to write a song. On this particular morning, I strummed a chord and sang, So long, Stompin' Tom, I can't believe you're gone. I had no intention of writing a, uh, a tribute song uh, per se. I just wanted to write a song in general. And um, lo and behold, so long Stomp and Tom fell out of the sky. Uh, as I was writing it, I knew I was on to something. Yeah, I, I knew it was special somehow. Uh, it, uh, it was hitting me uh, in a way that I thought uh, may hit other fans of Stomp and Tom. So anyway, I finished the song. Uh, I proceeded to start recording it. Um, and I sent an email to my friend Riss. Riss is the guy who's uh, helped me with my website since 2008. He's done every album cover I've done, uh, tons of my videos uh, uh, since the Red and White Blues album. Um, Anyway, so I asked Riss if he could maybe uh, assemble some footage of Stomp and Tom uh, from YouTube and see uh, if we could maybe do a little tribute video to him. I sent him the song. Uh, a couple hours later, he sent me the video. And uh, I liked it. I liked it a lot. Uh, his video really captured what the song was about. And um, pardon the pun, but I really felt like it struck a chord. Um, so anyway, but I wasn't really sure what I should do with the video uh, because I thought it may look like I was trying to cash in and I didn't want to cash in. Uh, so I decided to sleep on it that night. The next morning, I take Ruby to school again. I come home, I pour a cup of coffee, I watch the video another two or three times. Uh, and I like it. I still like the video. Um, so but I was still concerned and conflicted with what, if anything, I should do with the song because I didn't want it to look like I was trying to, you know, take advantage of a situation. Then I decided that, well, if the song were to make any money at all, I would give all the money to, uh, to the uh, charities that were near and dear to Tom's heart, which were um, the food banks and the homeless shelters across the land. Once I'd come to terms with that, my conscience was clear, and I posted the video just a little after nine o'clock in the morning uh, on, um, I believe, uh, the 8th of March, 2013. By 10 o'clock in the morning, so a little less than an hour after I posted it, the song had had 45 hits, 45 streams. Uh, and to me, I was just, I was stunned uh, by those numbers. Um, it was like a runaway train. Um, by three o'clock in the afternoon, it was at four or five hundred. By midnight that day, um, it was just under a thousand. I was starting to get emails from radio stations all across the country asking if they could add the song to their playlists uh, to various uh, Stomp and Tom tributes that they were doing um, uh, over the weekend. Of course, I'd never had such a notoriety before, uh, so I was all in. I just couldn't even believe that people uh, were reacting to that song the way they were reacting to that song. Um, the next morning, which would have been um, Saturday morning, the song was around 6,500 
pits. Uh, crazy. Um, uh, mind numbing. Uh, emails, I was getting emails uh, like, like, I, I, like dozens and dozens and dozens of emails, hundreds, probably close to a thousand emails by the end of that first day where, um, of just people sending me messages about that song and how it was um, helping them grieve with Stump and Tom's passing. I was kind of, uh, I wasn't expecting that by any stretch of the imagination. Sunday morning, so now the song had been out a little over, just shy of 48 hours, the song was at 14,000 spins. Uh, again, it was one of those things, it was just crazy. And more emails coming in, more requests for interviews. Uh, and then out of the blue, I get this email from this guy that says, Hey, Mike, uh, I'm Stompin' Tom's manager. And uh, I'm wondering, I am calling or I am emailing on behalf of uh, Tom's wife, Lena, and his son, Tom Jr., uh, to see if you would be interested uh, and available to sing your song, So Long Stompin' Tom, at Stompin' Tom's Memorial in Peterborough on Wednesday night. Needless to say, I didn't have uh, I didn't have to think very long about that. It was an automatic yes, I'll be there. So Tuesday morning, I hopped on a plane out of Nashville, flew into Toronto, uh, and uh, did a bunch of interviews around Toronto that day. A bunch of radio. I went to the Horseshoe Tavern to do a spot uh, for the National, um, and uh, you know the next morning, again more interviews. Got up in the uh, headed towards Peterborough around ten o'clock in the morning. Get to Peterborough, I guess around noon, early afternoon, and it's snowing as I'm pulling into the parking lot at the uh, at the uh, the arena where his memorial is, uh, and the parking lot is already full of cars. And it's a it's a just one big tailgate party. Uh, every ta every every vehicle is playing another Stomp and Tom song. And people are drinking, you know, schooner beer and moosehead beer, and, and uh, it was a it was a great slab of Canadian, uh, let's put it that way. And uh, the weather it couldn't have been more perfect weather for Stomp and Tom's funeral. Uh, it just kind of captured the essence of Stomp and Tom uh, and his hearty characters, and apparently his hearty fans. So I go into the arena uh, where I meet the band. They're on Stomp and Tom's band. They're already on stage. They're rehearsing a bunch of songs uh, for their memorial. And um, I walk up and I introduce myself to the guys uh, because they're going to be my backing band. A song that I had written a week before about Stomp and Tom is now being performed by Stomp and Tom's band. Uh, it was kind of a surreal moment. We ran through the song a couple times. It sounded great. I was really excited. I met Tom Jr., who looks exactly like his dad. Um, and then I uh, just sort of hung around. I ended up, uh, I didn't get a hotel. I was going to drive back to, to uh, Toronto after the uh, memorial because I had an early morning flight back to Tennessee. So I just hung around the arena uh, and watched all the proceedings, all the, the crew getting everything ready and the, and the um, uh, you know, the cameras all in place and the sound checks and this and that and everything else. Uh, I went down to the dressing room. They had a dressing room set, set aside for all the musicians. I went, I went down there. There was nobody in there because they had all gone back to the hotel. Uh, so I just laid down on one of the benches in the dressing room and uh, closed my eyes because it had been a long week and it felt like it was the first time I'd had any time at all to get, catch up on any sleep. Uh, and then I, you know, sort of dozed off for maybe half an hour or so. Uh, woke up, took my guitar out of the case, started running the song a couple more times. I hadn't really sung it since I'd recorded it, so I was really concerned about screwing up the words. Uh, I was singing the song at the top of my lungs with my eyes closed, and then I could feel that there was somebody, I heard somebody walk in the dressing room, and I opened my eyes, and it's Ken Dryden is standing there. And it's kind of, I was like, Ken Dryden was a hero of mine. Uh, when I was a kid, and to see him standing there in his hockey dressing room um, was, I mean, it just felt like a dream. It just felt like I was dream dreaming that I was playing on the 1978 
Montreal Canadiens, you know. Uh, it was just a really bizarre moment. And I was kind of so uh, caught off guard by him standing in the doorway. I said, hey, Ken, how you doing? And I remember thinking, you are such an idiot. You haven't even met this guy. Uh, if anything, he should be Mr. Dryden, and you're calling him Ken, like, uh, you know, like you guys carpool to work together or something. Uh, anyway, so I was appalled by, by, my, um, by my greeting to him, but he was uh, very gracious, and I got up, and I walked over, and we shook hands, and the whole thing. Uh, and then he went about his day. He sort of, I guess, was in that dressing room as well, and he had a briefcase and, you know, whatever else, and just sort of reading through some papers and stuff. It was probably like uh, his, you know, his speech that he was going to give that night. Uh, and then he took off, and I was kind of al alone in the dressing room again. And while I was sitting there working on the song, I heard these garage doors open up, and I felt a rush of cold air. And I knew instinctively, I somehow, I don't know why, but for some reason I knew instantly what that was. And I walked out of the dressing room and looked down the hall, and I saw Stomp and Tom's hearse backing in um, to, the, uh, to the rink. It was just one of those, you don't see that every day. Anyway, then, you know, maybe 10 minutes later, half an hour later, something like that, you could hear thousands of people stomping their feet uh, in, the, uh, in the arena. And uh, then the, then the uh, memorial got underway. The entire rink, we all sang O Canada. And then after that, Stomp and Tom's band started playing this waltz. Um, while, while the pallbearers brought out Tom's coffin onto the stage. They put his hat on top of the coffin. They leaned his sheet of plywood up against the, um, up against the coffin. And then the memorial was officially underway. And I guess it was probably two hours long. There was a bunch of, uh, bunch of uh, different singers doing Stomp and Tom songs. Um, Davnet Doyle. J.P. Cormier, a uh, bunch of guys, a bunch of people. Um, and uh, it just kind of went on. I was going to be, for some reason, I was the last act. Maybe because I was the last act added to the thing. Uh, but I was the last uh, uh, guy to sing for the memorial. And uh, I go up on stage, and uh, Tom's manager is introducing me. He's sort of standing at the podium and sort of saying, we heard this song last week and decided that we had to... Uh, have this song played tonight for you all. And I'm standing on the stage and I'm sort of looking over behind my sh over my shoulder to the guys in the band and giving them a thumbs up. I'm like, okay, here we go. Meanwhile, I'm thinking, don't screw this up. Whatever you do, don't screw this up. You know, we can't say cut, take two, nothing like that. So um, that's a concern of mine. So, of course, I get through the first verse so long, Stomp and Tom, I can't believe you're gone. And the, chow, the crowd starts cheering. And uh, from like Bud the Spud from the bright red, like Bud the Spud from the bright red mud and the gumboot cloggeroo, and the ch crowd cheers again. And then we were off and running. Uh, and of course, when you're thinking about screwing something up, you screw something up. So in the second verse, uh, the verse is, uh, uh, so many people I have not met, but yet I know by name. For some reason, I sang it for so uh, for for so many people that I've met, but yet I don't know their names. Uh, it still doesn't make any sense. I don't know why I sang it. I don't know where that came from. I don't know how that lyric bubbled up out of that song at that moment, but it did, uh, and I was uh, I was not thrilled, but somehow I kept my stick on the ice. And I uh, kept plowing through, and we finished the song. Uh, as I was walking off the stage, Davnet Doyle was standing in the wings, and she said, Do you realize that you just got a fucking standing ovation at Stompin' Tom's funeral? I hadn't realized that. Uh, and uh, it, was, uh, it was a surreal moment. Uh, there was a couple other funny things with that. One was... Um, um, uh, before, like the afternoon, during the afternoon, uh, Tom's wife, Lena, came up to me and she said, now listen, you have a lyric in your song that goes, um, 
and all them drunken angels. Um, she goes, there's going to be a lot of people who might be offended by that lyric. So uh, if you wanted to change that lyric, I wouldn't be offended if you changed it. Uh, but it's up to you. And then she added, and if it was Tom, he'd tell him to fuck right off. So I'm not stopping Tom. So I, um, I changed the lyric for Lena. And um, it was probably a better lyric anyway. But anyway, all in all, it was just one of those, it was probably the craziest week of my life, uh, maybe even the most rewarding week, uh, musically, of my life anyway. Um, it was uh, it was highlight real material, let's put it that way. Uh, that's really all I have to say about So Long Stompin' Tom. Uh, I love playing the song every night. I'll play it every night. Uh, my last show, whether that's next week or when I'm 110 years old, I am pretty sure that the song So Long Stompin' Tom uh, will be in the set list. Uh, yeah. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Take care. <laughs>